Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mariela Salinas, and I am a digital marketing specialist here at United Training. Welcome to today's webinar, Dashboards and Data Visualization in Tableau, presented by Sherry Hovenkamp. We are using the GoToWebinar platform for today's session, and we will be sharing a copy of this recording with you. We do encourage participation throughout the webinar, so please use the questions options in your GoToWebinar dashboard if you have any questions at all. United Training is excited to present this webinar today. I will now hand it over to you, Sherry. Awesome. So welcome, everyone. My name is Sherry Hovenkamp. I am a trainer here at United Training. I've been teaching Tableau for about two and a half years or so. Um, we are, oh, too far. We are looking at uh, dashboards and data visualization in Tableau. And for this webinar, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in a PowerPoint presentation. This is probably as far as that presentation goes. I really want to jump right in and talk about Tableau and show you some of the uh, some of the neat things that we can do. Tableau Desktop is part of a visual analytics platform. Let me go right into it. This is Tableau Desktop. I'm going to go to the start page and we'll see what that looks like when we open it up. It's part of a visual analytics platform that enables organizations to more easily explore their data and discover insights about patterns that emerge and visualizations that are created. In this short webinar, I'm just going to show you some basic functionality of Tableau, demonstrate just how easy it is to get started working with your data, and I'll walk through the basic workflow. The basic workflow is essentially this. We connect to our data, we analyze it by creating visualizations, and then we can share those visualizations using maybe a dashboard, maybe a story. It depends on how you want to provide uh, access to that data. What I want to start with is connecting to my data. So I have a file that I want to connect to. On the left-hand side of my Tableau desktop, I'm going to select to a file, Microsoft Excel. I have an Excel file called Superstore Main that I want to connect to. And I'm actually, I think, in the folder that has that file in it. So I'm just going to select that file, Superstore Main, and I'll click Open. This is creating a connection to my file. I'm not importing the data into Tableau. The Tableau uh, desktop is simply there to create views. It does not require me to import the data. It doesn't store the data. I have three different worksheets in this Excel, uh, Excel workbook. I am only interested in the orders worksheet, so I'll drag it over to where it says drag tables here. And when I pull that in, I'm creating a data source. And the data source that I have right now is orders superstore main. I'm just going to rename it. Orders sounds good to me. Nice and clear cut. And what this is showing me is with this Excel spreadsheet, I have all of these column headers that I see across the top of that data area. This is the data source area. I can see each of the columns and the first 1,000 rows of my data. What I'd like to do is go to a new worksheet and start creating a visualization. So I've connected to the data. I've specified exactly what worksheet I want to work with. I've created a data source. And now that I have that data source, I'm going to use it to build visualizations to look at my data. So I'll click on sheet one. We have similar terminology to what we would use in Excel. So a Tableau file is a workbook. And the different worksheets that we create, they are called worksheets. There are three different kinds of worksheets that I can build. I can build a worksheet, a dashboard, and a story. I won't get into stories in this webinar, but we're going to talk a little bit about, I'll probably build three views and then build a dashboard for us using those three views. In the Tableau desktop, uh, I have my data pane on the left-hand side. This contains all of the information, and I'll zoom in from time to time so you can see a little up close. All the information, all the fields that are in my orders data source. Here's the name of the data source, and then all of the fields. 
that are in that worksheet that I've now made into a data source. One of the things that I like about Tableau is that it's very easy for me to set up formatting that I want to be able to use on a regular basis. I don't like having to format things over and over again. I like being able to do things easily one time. So if I open up a menu for this field that I'm probably going to use quite a lot, I can go down to my default properties and change a number of different things about that particular field. In this case, I just want it to look the way I want it to look. So I'm going to change the number format. That'll open up my little window here where I can change the formatting quickly. I, of course, I like custom currency. I don't like decimal places, and I want this to be kind of minimal on the number of characters that I'm showing. Since I'm putting this into a dashboard, I'm going to think ahead about how much I actually want there. I don't like a lot of clutter in a dashboard. So now that I've formatted that field, now I want to start building a view. And what I'll build here is I'm going to build a line chart. So I want to see a line that shows the sales for all the months in our data set. So a couple of things that I'll do. This is a drag and drop uh, application. So I'm going to take my date field and I'm going to drag it to the column shelf. These things up here, columns and rows, they're called shelves. It's a place where you can put things and I can put fields on the shelves. So I'll take the order date and I'll drag that to the column shelf and I'll drop it. This is automatically bringing in each of the years of that date, but I said that I wanted, uh, I don't know if I said that I wanted, I wanna see the months. So I can easily change that from the drop down here on that pill, and it is called a pill because of the shape of that item on the shelf. If I click on the drop down, I have a couple different ways that I can display that date pill. I would like to see the months for each uh, for each year, so going across each year. So I'll click on that month down at the bottom. This is creating a continuous axis that allows me to now plot the sales value. So I'm going to go down and take sales and drag that up to rows. If I zoom out, I now have a line chart that shows the sales from November. Well, I don't know if that's November. Let's hover over it. Uh, January of 2017, all the way up through probably December of 2020. What I'm seeing here is one way that I can be interactive with my worksheets. These are called tooltips. As I hover over each one of these points, I'm seeing some information in the tooltip about the fields that I've put into the view. If I wanted to add a little bit more, maybe I want to also see the profit. I could take that field and put it on tooltip. There's a card here that allows me to change the look of whatever it is that I'm putting on my view. So if I wanted to see the profit on, let's say, tooltip, I can put that on tooltip. And now when I hover over a mark, now I can see the profit as well as the sales. It doesn't impede the view. It doesn't change uh, a lot of how much I can see but it's giving me more information. One of the other things that I might want to do here is I might want to split this up so that I'm seeing one line per segment. I have a segment field here, and if I take that segment, I could put it in a couple different places. I could put it on detail. That gives me one line per segment. That's a little hard to read. I could put it on color. Color changes the color of each line so that for each segment, and I see the segment over here on the right, for each segment, I see a different line color. This is a little much to look at at the moment, but as I move forward, I may be able to minimize how much uh, kind of clutter we're seeing on the screen. One of the things that I might do is I might filter this by year so that I'm looking at only one year at a time. So I'll do that pretty quickly. I'm going to take order date from my data pane. 
I could drag it up here to my filter shelf, but I'm, I'm kind of lazy. So I'm going to click on the little drop down instead. And I want to show the filter. If I drag it to the filter shelf, there's a little more work that I have to do. Here, I can just use show filter. And when I click on that, it creates the filter for me and makes it interactive. So anyone else that I share this with would also be able to filter. Now, there are some other things that I could do with that filter that makes it easier for me to use. If I click this little drop down arrow in the top right corner, I can customize the filter so that I don't get to choose all. I can only look at one year at a time. Let me show you what I mean. Right now, if I click away from that, I have an all value. I can uncheck these others and I can see all. So I'm looking at all the four years. Or I could uncheck all and check 2018. And this makes it easier for me to see those patterns. I don't like the way that filter works, so I'm going to get rid of that all value and also make it so that I can't choose two years at a time. And I do all of that from this little drop down. I'll customize it and get rid of that all value. Now I can only see one year at a time. And I'll change it to a single value list so that when I make that change, I don't have to uncheck the boxes. It just makes it easier for me to work with that filter. I might even change the name of the filter. I'll edit the title so that instead of saying year of the order date, I can give my end user some instructions. Select a year. That filter is interactive and it will be available when I share this on my dashboard. Now, there's just a couple other things that I really want to do. Thinking ahead and thinking about that dashboard, I'm not a fan of the names on axes. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'll edit the axis and I'll get rid of that name sales. When I name this worksheet, it's going to say something about sales by year or sales by month. Also not a fan of this one. So I'll get rid of that one. I'll edit the axis. Get rid of that and i might even change the way these dates look but yeah i think i'll i'll just keep going we might do that later on i'll call this one monthly segment sales and to do that i can either double click or right click and rename cheat one i'll double click press enter, that also becomes the title. I could always change that, but I think I'll keep it for now. And I'm happy with that at the moment. So I'll go on to a new worksheet. This next one, I'm going to build a quick bar chart. I want to take a look at the sales by category and subcategory. So category and subcategory, I'll put those on rows. And I'll bring sales back up to my columns. I'll probably sort this a little bit. I like to sort things nicely so that it's easy to see patterns and, and uh, how things are related to one another. So I've got a toolbar up here that has lots of ex extremely useful tools. In this case, that descending order will organize my fields based on the sales. Perfect. Now, I want to be able to see which segments purchased which subcategories and how much and be able to compare them. So just like I did with that monthly segment sales with the three, well, with the three different lines, I'm going to take that segment and bring it up to color. And that will break up each one of my bars so that I can see the amount of sales for each segment. Now there's a couple other things that I want to do here. This was a, a pretty easy bar chart to build, but there are a couple things that I want to kind of fix up. I want to stretch this so that it takes up more space on the screen. So I'll change the fit from standard to entire view, taking up the entire view, getting rid of some of that white space. I also, since I'm going to name this category and subcategory sales, uh, I'm probably going to get rid of the title sales. So I'll uncheck uh, or right click 
and get rid of that title and close that window. That just makes more space. And we're going to find out that when we do get to the dashboard, that little bit of space that I've just gained makes a big difference. I'm also really not a fan of these two labels up here. I know that these are categories and I get that these are subcategories. I probably don't need to see these. So I can hide the labels. Done. Really, the only thing that I need to do here is change the name. So I'll call this uh, category and subcategory sales by segment. And maybe I should maybe fix the name, have subcategory with a Y. That would be better. Maybe put the Y in the right place. There we go. That's much better. One thing that's bothering me is that I don't want these colors for the segment, so I want to change those colors. I can do that easily on the color shelf. So if I click on the marks card here, click on color, I can edit the colors and change to a different set of colors or even a different palette. There are lots of different palettes. I'm going to go with uh, that one. And the way that I change those colors, I click on one of the items here, select the data item, and then I select the color. And then select another item and select the color and select an item and select the color. That's a little close. Maybe I'll do that one instead. And just to make sure that I'm happy, I click apply and I can see that color change and I'll click OK. Now, if you remember, I did use segment on the other work on the other worksheet that I created. So if I go back over here to monthly segment sales, I've just colored in these segments with this series of colors. If I go back over here, those are the same. It carries that color through, which makes it very easy for me to make uh, worksheets that look nice and have kind of the same pattern. Uh, new worksheet. The last worksheet. I'm going to make this a sales map. So I'll name it right away. We've seen a line chart. We've seen a bar chart. Let's make a map. If I look in my data pane, I can see that some of the fields here have these little globe icons next to them. The little globe icons mean that the field has a geographic location that can be plotted on a map. The way to do that is to take that field and put it on the detail shelf. And it takes a second, so I'm going to drag that state right up to the detail shelf, and I'll talk about what's going to happen here. Well, it doesn't take too long in this case. So it's plotting out where the state is on the map. It is only going to include those states where we've sold something in this data set. So I don't see Alaska or Hawaii. We haven't sold anything in Alaska or Hawaii. If I connected to a data set where we didn't sell anything in Montana, Idaho, or Wyoming, we wouldn't see little dots next to them. Now that I have a map showing all the places where I have sold things, I can change the look of that map. I could change that mark, that dot, that circle. I can change it based on our sales. So if I drag sales up, there's a size shelf here. I can have the size of the dot change based on the amount of sales. And I can click on size and change the size so that I can see those dots a little bit more clearly. This is even more fun if I have the city up there. So if I bring city to the detail shelf, now I can see all of the different dots. And I can make some changes to the formatting to, uh, to kind of help me see a little more information, but I don't want all that. I don't want that either. What I want instead is to color in the states, not the dots. And I want the states to be colored based on the sales. So I'll bring sales up to color and it colors in the states for me. Now I've got a legend over on the right-hand side that shows what those colors mean. Looks like we've had our highest sales in California. That's the darkest blue. And then the lightest ones, well, there's a lot. So there's a lot of light colored ones. If I hover over each of these states, I can see 
that little screen tip or tool tip that tells me how much money we made in each one of those states. Now, before I bring these three worksheets into a dashboard, I would like to make a couple of changes to this map. First off, I can see little kind of shaded names back there. I've got Canada and Mexico down here. I really don't want all of that visual clutter. I don't want to see, sort of see the names of the states behind the colors. So I want to clean that up a bit and I want to label the states with the sales. Quick, easy way for me to label is to click the little T in the square. Now that's pretty big. So I think maybe I'll change the size. That looks a little bit better. Probably need a little smaller once we get into the dashboard. T in the square just turns on the label for the measure that is on our shelf. The other thing I'll do is I'll go to the map menu. And on the map menu, I can change the layers that are in the map. I'll click map layers. It opens up a panel here on the left hand side where I can change the background of that map. If I want to have the streets visible, it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to see the streets when I'm this far away and when I have those states colored in. But if I change the map a little bit, that might be useful. I think I'm going to stick with light. And I can see all of the different layers that are in here, like the country and region borders and names, the base, the land cover, the state and province names and borders. This is where I can start unchecking things to clean things up a little bit. And there I finally got rid of some of the names. I'm actually unchecking everything so that when I get this on a dashboard, it looks very clean, uncluttered, and easy to read. Now I think I'm ready to build my dashboard. So I'm gonna go over to my worksheets down here at the bottom. I have a new worksheet, I have a new dashboard, and I have a new story. I'm not gonna get into stories, but we'll do a new dashboard. The dashboard is a way for me to combine worksheets and make some interactive tools that allow people to either look at the insights that I've made about the data or to discover their own insights. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to change the size of this dashboard to match my screen. It's always a good idea to match the size of the dashboard to whoever is going to be looking at that dashboard. And you've got the size in the left panel here. I'm gonna change it to automatic and it will automatically resize to fit whatever screen it's displayed on. Not always the best choice, but in this case, it'll work out really nicely. I have the sheets that are in my workbook, and I have a bunch of other objects that are down at the bottom here. I have the ability to show a, a dashboard title. I tend to do that at the very end. It makes it easier to work with. And I can change the way that I'm creating the dashboard, a couple of different ways to create the dashboard. What I'll do here is I'll start bringing in my worksheets. And it says right in the middle here, drop sheets here. All I have to do is drag them in and drop them. So I'm going to start with my sales map. When I drag that sheet in, it covers the entire view. You can see that as I drag that in, it's kind of shading in the entire thing. I'll let go of that and it takes up the whole view. I would like to put, uh, let's see, where do I want to put everything? I think. I want to put that bar chart, that one, I'm going to put that to the right of the map. So I'll drag it in. And as I drag that in, you can see how it seems to be changing where I'm going to place it just by where I'm dragging my mouse. I want to put it to the right of the map. So I'll drop it there. Underneath all of that, I want to put that bar, that uh, line chart. There it is. And hopefully you're seeing that you can see a preview of each of those sheets as I'm hovering over them. I'm gonna drag this one in. I want that on the very bottom that goes all the way across. So I just have to be patient and just drag that mouse down until I see up oh, that shaded area. 
I'll let go. And now I've got my line chart. Now I'll change a couple of things. Uh, first things first, this view right here, I think I'd like that to be vertical. I kind of like that vertical, although I like that right now. I could always swap it if I want. I do want to move what's going on over here. I think this entire container that holds those three things, I want to move it down next to the line chart. So I'll click on the container. I have the handle of that container up here at the top, and I can drag it and drop it where I want. I want it to go to the right of the line chart, and then I'll just change the size. Oops. Sometimes things can be a little bit tricky, but I'll change that size. This legend goes with the map, so I might put it with the map. I'm gonna do a little shortcut here. I'm gonna click on that legend, hover over the handle, hold down the shift key, and I can drag that legend and throw it in the ocean here. So now when I look at this, I'll see the legend with the correct view. Nice little trick. Uh, the segment, I, I feel like I need to have that legend, so I'll leave that there. I also have my filter. Remember that filter allows me to filter this view right here. But to make this a bit more interactive, I'm gonna do just two more things. We're getting close to the end of our webinar, but these are the last two things that I really wanted to do. I would like to be able to use that filter to filter all of the worksheets at once. I'll change it by clicking on the filter. I'll click the little arrow here to get into my more options. And all I have to do is choose apply to selected worksheets, select all the worksheets on the dashboard and click OK. I'll zoom out before I do that so you can see See what's going to happen here. Now, as I select a different year, you're going to see that things change a little bit. I lose some states up here, There's some states where I haven't sold things in 2017 or in 2020, poor Wyoming, and then 2019. Oh my goodness. Half the states that I'd like to live in someday are all missing now. So now that this filter filters all of the dashboard, now I'd like to do the same for the sales map. When I click on a state, I want it to filter what's in the other two views, and that's really easy to do. All I have to do is click on that view, go up to my little toolbar that opens up to the right, and click on Use as Filter. Now that I've got that set, let's say I want to see something about sales in Texas. So now I'm filtering my view down here. I'm also filtering my category and subcategory sales by segment to show just the sales in Texas. And then if I wanted to switch that to another year, I can do the same thing. Now when I'm in presentation view, I can change that to presentation view so that I'm able to see what my end users are going to see. They won't see all those dotted lines that I had and see the menus that I showed you. They're going to see this. Now, I would want to clean this up a bit, but 20 minutes doesn't really give you enough time to clean it as much as you want. But this is how they're going to use it. They'll click on New York, and they can see the filters that filter all three worksheets. Click on the filter for the year. We can see all three worksheets. Click on Home Office so we can highlight that Home Office, or Consumer so we can highlight that segment instead and then maybe change it to North Carolina and see the consumer in 2019. Some pretty neat ways that you can analyze that data and really have something that, uh, that is very interactive and there's a lot more that you can do, but we're running really low on time. So I think that I'm going to clear my filter by clicking in the ocean. and start to wrap things up. So any questions I can answer at this point? Uh, we do have one question. Um, at the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned how you have a set customization of formatting. Where could you go to set your parameters or anything else that you need when you open a new dashboard or a set? Uh, 
to change the formatting? Yeah, like when you open um, a new... When I open a new workbook? Well, yeah, when you open a new workbook. Mm -hmm. So on the format menu, there is a workbook option. This allows me to format some of the key features in a workbook. For example, this workbook, I changed the, the default format for the font size so that we'd be able to actually see it. It starts out at nine. So this is where I changed certain default features in a specific workbook. If I'm looking to change a, a field or change the properties of a field, this is where I'm going to change the format. So if I wanted to change, uh, let's say profit to show a certain format, I would go down to default properties to change that. Once I have something showing, let's just say that I wanted to switch profit and sales on this example. So let's say I bring profit and drop it over the top of sales. It's not formatted nicely. Uh, as far as I can tell, I'd like a dollar sign. I like dollar signs. I could right click on this and format it. And I have that format panel where I can do some things. This is a little bit tricky sometimes. I am looking at the axis. I'm formatting that specific field. And this is where I can change that particular format so that I can see some dollar signs, maybe the K, and get it set up the way that I want. Anything else about field properties? I can do a lot of that on the data source page. So if I'm looking to uh, change a data type, change anything like that, I do that on the data source page. And then I heard you say parameters and sets. Those are things that we would create. They're a little bit more involved but those are things that we would create and I would tend to create them from the data pane. I would create parameters and calculated fields from the top of the data pane. And I would create sets using whichever field it is that I wanted and go into creating a set. Awesome. We have, I know we are a little bit over time, but we do have one more question. Mm -hmm. um, it's from Parker and he's saying, can you talk a little bit about the structure of the data that needs to be in Excel before you connect to Tableau? Example, do you missing values need to be handled a certain way beforehand? Do mm -hmm. full addresses need to be a certain format, et cetera? One of the super fabulous things about Tableau, and I'm just gonna quickly connect to something different, is that you can have a, uh, an original data file that is kind of messy, like this one. This is kind of messy. So this is a, an example of a file that is uh, summarized. It looks like the results of a pivot table if you're an Excel pivot table person. Um, I've got header information up here and you can see no column headers, the dates are spread out, it's just a mess. It would be nice if every data set that we connect to is transactional data, individual rows of data, that would make it easier. It would be nice if the region and the salesperson names were separate in different fields, but I'm gonna quickly show you how easy it is in Tableau to actually fix that. I, I won't spend a ton of time doing it, but I'm gonna start by using the data interpreter and letting it get rid of these two rows at the top. I'm gonna split this field right here, just like that, split, super, super easy. And there are other features that would allow me to do more complex splits. So that address, I'd be able to split that up, whether it's with a custom split or with a function. Um, and then taking this data that is spread out over the whole uh, side here, I'm gonna select all of that. And even though it's summarized right now, I can fix that by pivoting the data. I can hide this column that I don't need anymore, change all the names of the fields. This will be a date. That one will be the number of sales. This will be the region and that'll be the sales person. And the only other thing that I really need to do is change the date to a date. And I took that really messy, not very well structured data set. And within a minute and a half or so, I've got it set up the way that I need it so that I could actually go in and build something off of that data set. So if I needed my region and my salesperson, I actually like that flipped. And I'll bring in the number of sales, stretch it. 
and put, uh, I don't know, region on color. So with that kind of ugly, messy data set, you do have lots of tools in Tableau that will help you fix it uh, pretty quickly and easily. Awesome. Well, we are a little over time, so I will go ahead and end the webinar now. But I just wanted to say thank you so much, Sherry. That was a lot of an amazing information. Um, to everybody in the chat, we will be sharing this recording with you. And if you need anything else, just reach out to us and let us know. But uh, other than that, everybody have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.